Have you always been told that green tea must be drunk fresh? And what about aged green tea? Does it really sound so strange? Well, let's have a look at this video to find out more. And also, if you're searching for tea to drink in Eastern time, that's also the right video to watch. So let's get started explaining what is aged green tea. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nannoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. And today there is a special tea that I would like to discover with you. Today I'm here with Caroline. Hi! And uh, we are going to explore this tea together. She has been drinking this, drinking this tea some years ago, so you don't know how does it taste now, so let's find out this together. If you are new here in our channel and you are also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. And if at any point of time you enjoy watching, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. All right, so where we are, we are actually uh, traveling. We are not in our uh, usual studio, not at Caroline's place, not at my place, but we are in uh, Southeast uh, uh, USA. And actually we selected this place because uh, we found a very special uh, Airbnb uh, run by uh, Miss uh, Claire. Miss Claire is uh, a native Chinese and uh, she made uh, a, um, a studio actually in the basement of the house for herself. She's an artist, she likes to paint, she likes to drink tea, so she made a tea artistic uh, uh, studio, can we say? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, in this studio she meant originally just to spend time for herself, to make drawings and uh, to paint and to drink tea. And then I think she had the thought of why not sharing with others. So when we notice on Airbnb, they have uh, a tea place Airbnb, we just decided to make a vacation down here. And it's a beautiful area. So if you plan to come down to Southeast uh, USA for, uh, for a vacation, consider um, coming to this place. We will put actually a link in the description below. And uh, this is not the only place where you can actually combine Airbnb with tea. Uh, if you are uh, in Europe and you don't want to come over to the US just to see the place, also in Turin, in the northern Italy, there are guys that are on Airbnb that do tea experiences with uh, uh, Gongfu Cha, with proper tea. They are really fond of tea. So uh, I will put also a link in the description below. And if you uh, want to go to northern Italy, explore the city of Turin, which is very nice. Have you been there? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Have been uh, we've been there, there. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. We've been there. There is not only the Egyptian museum that is worth visiting, but also a nice tea experience. All right, so let's get started. First of all, uh, we are approaching Easter and uh, we were thinking which is a good tea to drink for Eastern. So Eastern is the time where the temperatures are rising, but they're not yet, uh, it's not yet summer, of course. And in this kind of in-between season, you like something refreshing, but not too much. And so I thought adding an aged green tea is a good idea to approach the summer, to awake the fresh sensation in your body without actually going too much into a very fresh green tea. But some of you actually, or most of you that are into tea, have always been told that green tea must be drunk fresh. In fact, actually we keep green tea um, in our warehouse in the fridge. And Originally, the very beginning, this tea, uh, three years ago, was also in the fridge. And we offer it uh, in, uh, uh, on our shop and then things changed. So let's speak about shortly about uh, which tea is this one. The name is uh, Yunsi. Yunsi means uh, cloud silk. Now, there is a famous green tea in China that is Yun Yu, which is uh, a mist and cloud, or actually cloud and mist. Maybe Yunnanese people took inspiration for this naming. They don't have the mist in Yunnan, they're just the clouds, and they add the silk instead. Whatever. Yunsi is actually a name for tea that is very much used in Yunnan, and I don't think elsewhere. This tea was harvested in 2017, in end of March 2017. So some of you might think, oh, just three years old, that's not aged, but we will come very short to that point. And uh, uh, it is made from uh, the Dae Jong uh, cultivar variety. So they use this tea, uh, this type of leaves also to do poor, actually. It is uh, relatively large leaves, yeah, because of, I uh, said it is a large leaves uh, variety. So let's take this out. 
We have here our uh, travel set. I'll put a little bit in the guy one. And I'll show you uh, on the screen how actually this tea uh, looks like. It has, uh, despite being relatively large leaves, it has a fairly large amount also of uh, uh, buds. Uh, you see them, you don't see them in the camera, but you see them where it is uh, um, uh, white the, uh, with the small hairs. And you see also in the bags there are a lot of hairs. So what happens with this team? Um, I actually um, visited some years ago a friend in uh, uh, Zhengzhou in uh, China and he uh, showed me some really aged green tea. It was 25 years old and uh, uh, at the time he bought that in the 90s, Puer was not that, that famous yet, but green tea from China, Dian Lu, was very famous. So he thought he will buy a large quantity for future investment. Yeah, he should maybe have invested in uh, Yencha or in Puer because nowadays green tea from Yunnan is not famous, but that was his choice. And he still has uh, this very precious tea that is actually super expensive. And we had the opportunity to taste it with a friend, with Benjamin, and, uh, uh, and I was surprised because it was really tasty while I know that green tea, if you keep it out of the fridge after one year, I mean, you can throw it away. Of course, we're speaking a very high quality green tea. If you buy a bad or an average green tea, it won't change much over time because it's already bad at the beginning. But if you take a green tea that is very fresh and very high quality and with this kind of uh, very clear flowery notes, those will fade out and you will have this dumb mm. taste uh, uh, that you don't want to have. So I've thrown, out, I've thrown away quite a lot of green tea because of that. But after this experience, I thought that this tea that is made with uh, leaves from uh, uh, Daya John, from the Lark Leaf variety, with which we also do poor, might be well suited for aging. And so what we did, we removed it from the website all of a sudden, although we had still some kilos on stocks, and we take, took it out of the fridge three years ago. It was stored in a large bag within a carton box so that uh, um, it's dark mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we we tighten the um, the bag but not completely tight so there was a little hole in the top of the bag mm -hmm. to just allow some uh, some water cha some air change and we left it there for three years now as said green tea changed it quite quickly and when I uh, last February I was in Berlin I tried it again together with Henning and Dimitri and we really like it. So we thought, uh, yeah, let's, uh, uh, let's bring it back online. And uh, um, we will also offer larger quantities so that if you would like to buy like 100 or 200 grams for uh, storage so that you can keep it for long, uh, we can make larger bags and uh, you save money also with that. So, Caroline, you have tasted this tea three years ago, but do you remember it? Uh, I remember it vaguely as being quite vegetal, um, so you can taste, uh, so for me at least it wasn't that much of a flowery uh, green tea, but rather quite interesting one, uh, yeah, with very greenish taste, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very savory actually. Yeah, very yeah. savory, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not the type of green tea uh, that, as we said before, you associate very much with uh, a strong flower and uh, lightness it is um, it has a certain body a certain heft so let's wait a little bit here we can do also a first steeping light let's see how it yeah, is yeah. yeah there we go yesterday evening we were drinking uh, um, tea with Claire actually exactly in these uh, on this table it was very interesting to have an exchange with her she moved uh, from China from Beijing in the US when did she say uh, I can't remember if it's 23 or 26 years yeah ago something already. like that yeah. so it, long time ago but uh, uh, you can see in her studio that there is still a lot of Chinese influence uh, we have uh, um, there is just next to us uh, a cabinet with a lot of teaware and also um, a very rough handmade uh, Ishin teapot and then she has here and there some uh, painting. Uh, what did she say about the painting? Do you remember? 
is it silkscreen paintings or no? Sure. I remember the technique. I'm, I'm so not so much an so artist. Paintings done on very thin uh, rice paper, so it's very delicate, and um, she even has a special table um, that is transparent that allows her to. Um, make sure she gets the shapes right because apparently no yeah no mistakes uh, are allowed actually when you draw on these types of uh, very thin uh, paper yeah. yeah and um all right here is the tea okay. yeah it tastes very fav uh, savory yeah it is um mm. It has still this clear savory note. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a little bit of a meal. It's not only a drink, if you know what I mean. But uh, it does. Uh, yeah. <coughs> but there's still a bit of a yeah. You're right. A bit of fruity note, maybe. Or something. Yeah, yeah, there are some yeah. fruity notes. Is uh, some. Uh, it it doesn't have. I mean, the freshness is gone. It's no more a super fresh green tea. Yeah. Mm. But uh, but the taste is is definitely there. It have evolved. It's not the tea that you would throw away at all, and actually you want uh, to store it and keep it for the years to come and see how it changes further. Yeah, and towards, so at the very first sip, I had the feeling it was still vegetal, but the more I drink it, the more, like I, from my perspective, it, yeah, it has become a bit more fruity and, mm -hmm. with the, the, and I would say what remains is actually a slight passion fruit taste. It has, it has uh, um, some tropical fruit in it. And this is uh, something that you don't very commonly find in uh, green tea. We had, uh, um, some of you know that we cooperate with uh, Coda, which recently received a uh, uh, one star Michelin, is a, a dessert restaurant in Berlin, that they combine dessert together with tea and also other uh, drinks. So basically you can have a, a full menu there and you get uh, uh, a dessert with a drink associated to it. And the dessert are not necessarily sweet because they don't work with the refined products like sugar, for example, but they take the sweetness from the natural uh, ingredients. And uh, when we tasted the tea with them, they made a clear association with the passion fruit and other tropical fruits. And uh, if I'm right, it was also the kind of direction that uh, Joe, you know, crazy Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Joe, uh, which is a, a very good friend of us, a tea friend uh, that lives in Switzerland, was making with this tea. When he first tasted it, he was a bit skeptical because I have to say, Yunsi is a fairly affordable green tea, right? So people that are into tea, they like to spend money with tea, right? When they see, oh, that costs a lot, it must be really a good tea. It doesn't cost a lot, it's crap. It's not necessarily true. And this, he was really surprised at that time, I remember years ago, and then I told him that it was sold out. So Joe, if you're looking this video, you see it's not sold out, sorry about that. It is, we have a big bag of it, we took some risk, but you know, it is not an expensive tea. So I thought, now or never, right? It was at that time the cheapest green tea that we had on stock, so we took away some kilogram, and of course, yeah, this year when I tried it, I could have thrown it away. I, I have even green tea that I keep in the fridge for two years and then they are no more there. I have to say that after one year, if you keep the green tea in the fridge, you would barely taste a difference with the fresh product. Yeah, it doesn't have to be outside, never. But uh, if you don't do that, and I forgot the tea here. Oops. So let's see how it resists to longer steeping now. <laughs> Not intentionally so. And also in the color, you can see that is no more these uh, uh, clear, pure green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it has a little bit uh, some darker tone. And if you would have to associate it with the food, difficult question. It's very difficult because the tea in itself is like a meal yeah it starts a bit savory mm. and then it ends it ends pretty sweet so it's it's quite interesting that it like it's a chameleon tea <laughs> i think that coda at that time for a short period of time they had a dessert with the mango and ananas there were other ingredients because they always like to search a balance 
but uh, uh, they combine it that for a short period of time this tea with it because it is not very bitter for being a green tea and they always search this balance and it has this tropical fruitiness to it but they always uh, it was very interesting if you, if you end up in Berlin go to Koda is, is an experience and they always do cocktail with tea so for example they use uh, um, our uh, ginger may with uh, Madeira mm -hmm. liquor mm -hmm. I don't know with which dessert, I cannot remember, but uh, apparently it goes really well because they keep on ordering large quantities of ginger may every few weeks. And we are so happy that uh, this year they got uh, um, one star Michelin, which is, uh, um, it might sound, I mean, there are restaurants around the world, there are I think seven restaurants in Berlin with one star Michelin. We actually thought the, the this place wouldn't be eligible for uh, Michelin star because it's only doing dessert, so it's pretty rare. Um, usually, mm -hmm. it would be traditional restaurants where you can have a full meal experience, but this is really uh, focused on desserts and drink. Well, comparing you, can have a, you can have a seven course meal only with dessert. Yeah, and at the end, you don't feel, uh, um, how do you say? Uh, don't feel very full because yeah. they really make sure that they don't use refined sugar in such, but they really pr uh, process fruit or even weird thing like i remember i will still remember that i had this dish made out of um fermented garlic and actually it mm -hmm. tasted really a bit chocolatey and it was really interesting so you i mm -hmm. think um this is probably i think that i had my the most interesting desserts um there uh just because yeah uh, sometimes ingredients are used in a very unexpected way and it still works and really in fact um, some desserts are not even sweet they, they cover the whole spectrum of the basic tasties and the, uh, the chef, René, is, uh, uh, was uh, uh, the prime uh, pas 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 pastry. Pastry, pastry chefs in a three-star Michelin restaurant and he always had this idea of combining um, the technique of uh, the, the pastry um, processing of food with uh, other ingredients. So you can have there sometime even meat if you want in a dessert. And, uh, and they like to associate that with different drinks. So we were never thinking that a dessert restaurant would get some Star Michelin. And in fact, that's the first restaurant in the world that got it. How it is, I stipped it too long, but mm, it's, it's still, not bad. It's still good. It didn't get bitter at all, actually. And um, yeah, it just strengthened this these upper notes. Yeah. yeah. The, the fruitiness and yeah and you now maybe you know what i meant uh, with uh, it is a good tea for easter like uh, i i like green tea in summer and spring is a green tea season so in in china tea lovers green uh, start drinking green tea in spring and then through to summer but spring in china in southern china where tea grows is different than spring here well, I have to say in the southeast of the US it's already quite warm, but uh, if you live in Berlin or in other places uh, around the world where the climate is not that hot, then at Easter is not like in uh, Shanghai yeah, or even farther south where you have this, uh, it's, it's almost summer basically. So it's normal in China to drink very refreshing green tea already for Eastern and uh, well, they don't celebrate Eastern, but uh, yeah, in that period of the year, while in uh, Europe and in Central uh, US uh, is uh, um, is less uh, suitable. But I thought here we have the right compromise between, uh, um, can I say awakeness? Yeah, a tea that really, I mean, here is early, early in the morning, the sun is rising and we are just starting the day with this tea. Yeah, and it's a good match. And as you see, I also keep uh, the tea still completely in the water. Now I have to say, this is the technique I usually use for green tea. In this case, you can even steep it like, uh, even like a shampooer actually. But uh, the difference is that it doesn't have all the bitterness of a shampooer. So even if now this steeping, I had already water in it, was maybe five minutes. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it became very bitter. So it didn't become bitter, it just became a bit astringent, but... Uh, yeah, you start feeling yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's also, we like bitter. I mean, I like, you like it as well, right? So... Yeah. I mean, it, then the astringency reminds you a bit more like of the poor's actually, yeah. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. 
And in fact, I mean, the difference between a shampooer and a green tea, I would say it's very borderline. Uh, there was a time in history when uh, they had to define poor because when there was the poor hype, uh, 2006, 2007, they, they had this uh, association in union and they are, were searching for a definition of and different professor made proposals. And you could see that uh, that definition was kind of uh, always at the borderline uh, with uh, green tea. Anytime they wanted to put Sheng in, uh, in the, um, in the field, right? Uh, because if you would describe just Shu, that's a different topic. So I will do, uh, still have been thinking doing that for a while, but I have to collect a few more data. And then I would like really to make a video about uh, Shangpur and green tea, which are the differences, which are the commonalities and so on. So this is our third long steep. Try to show you the color here. We are not uh, filtering. Um, actually, I rarely use a uh, filter. I like to use a uh, Hulu uh, filter because they are natural, made of uh, calambash. But um, they are also very fragile. So when I travel, I tend to pack my backpack really, really full. So I prefer not using it. And you see that also when I do videos at home, I rarely use it. So you see a lot of uh, you see them? The well, we are now in, we uh, saw in the package. In the yeah. package. You see uh, all the small hair from the buds. And we are using a fairly large amount of leaves. I tried to get close to that camera. I hope uh, you can see it uh, better. Not sure. I'm trying. So it's a fairly large amount of leaves. Um, the leaves are very soft. If I would see these leaves without knowing it is a green tea and I would touch them, I would probably bet it is a, a very young shampooer. And I would, I would ask myself why they have chosen actually such small leaves for a poor. It's true. I have the feeling that although it's the Daejeong cultivar, the, le the mm -hmm. leaves don't look like huge. It's like they are not. I mean, they are not huge like a shampooer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. shampooer, you really uh, you taste a bit. You, you take a little bit larger leaves. But if you think about the typical um, early spring, we say twenty fifth of March. This was picked. I mean, okay, Yunnan spring come earlier, so it's a bit different, but. An early spring tea from uh, Longjing from Biluochun. I mean, they are super tiny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why. And here we have leaves that are maybe um, pop, pop, uh, one inch, like two, three centimeter, even some of them. Look at this. Mm. So some of you that have ordered this tree three years ago would definitely be an experience to try it again if you can recall that at that time we had amanda uh, describing our teas she's actually here in the us in kansas and um, uh, she described it as uh, reminding her of crispy uh, stir fried vegetables yeah um with uh, I, if i remember right with a slight uh, um flowery note towards the end that i don't pick personally anymore do you? Oh yeah, so pick you it. like it? That's like in the aftertaste, or oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so now I kind of feel like it became more flowery than savory. Uh, so maybe we moved on to the dessert a few years later, but I know. <laughs> and the smell, it's still very this, vegetal. The, exactly. When yeah. you smell it, though, it's 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 really the stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, like yeah. Uh, zucchini, maybe. Yeah. Fried exactly. zucchini. Yeah. Grill, grilled zucchini. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the texture, they, they describe it as a cloud silky. Uh, I'm not so sure, I wouldn't describe the texture as silky. There are other teas that are much smoother, let's say. These are too much strength. But you know, I mean, they are just uh, poetic names. Maybe if you're referring to the cloud of small hair <laughs> in the... Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe it was know. that, could be. Okay. And if uh, uh, you are unfamiliar with this way of doing tea and you're just watching this video because you were curious which tea should you drink for uh, uh, for Eastern, actually you can prepare this tea also in the normal and standard teapot. The method that we are using here is Gongfu Cha, is made for bring out even more taste and you see we do a lot of steepings and 
the tea evolves over these steepings, and that's the way we like to drink uh, uh, to drink tea. But you if you have a chance, try to keep the the leaves in the water. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've so seen that the, the leaves don't start uh, oxidating because of the of the the, the, the air. Yeah, especially with just um, top up with water. Yeah, yeah, you can top up with water, especially with fresh green tea. This tea has already been oxidizing for a while. It's still actually fairly green. Yeah, and the uh, color didn't change that much when you were pouring. Like no, not much. Steep That's and you wrong. would expect, like, if you don't just top up with water, but really like. Uh, uh, pour like until the yeah, leaves are dry. Bit, yeah. The color would change to yeah. to yellow, uh, a bit darker. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So that's our experience. Now we are going uh, to pack everything and going and heading up to the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Drink the tea. Let us know what you think about it in the comments below. Especially if you drank Yunsi already three years ago when it was online and fresh. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and go ahead subscribing our channel if you want to, to stay tuned with more video. Thanks a lot and we will see you next time. Bye bye guys! Bye.